Hello everyone, and welcome to the ninth episode of Analyzing Evil. In this video, we'll be covering perhaps one of the most iconic horror villains of all time, Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This film and Leatherface are both credited with inspiring many of the great slasher films that would come after it, and the first film has stood the test of time to be considered a classic among horror enthusiasts. Now, as with the Hellraiser franchise, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise is expansive and encompasses a number of films, comic books, and video games. The timeline within the Texas Chainsaw Massacre universe is incredibly muddy, and it's for that reason that today we'll be going over Leatherface as he appears in the first two installments, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1 and 2, as they were both written by the original creators of the film, Toby Hooper and Kim Heinkel. I'm sure the other films have their merit, and bring some detail to Leatherface's character that these two do not but for continuity's sake, we're going to stick with these two. If you'd like to see more videos on Leatherface as he appears in other media, feel free to let me know down below. Without further ado, let's head into the backwoods and get to know the friendliest butcher in Texas. Leatherface, like many of the slasher flick villains that he inspired, doesn't say a word throughout the entire film. He does make noises, however, and they do serve some importance to his character, but we'll mainly be focusing on his actions, mannerisms, and the influence his family and environment have had on him. Let's start with how Leatherface became the man we see in the films. We don't have too much to go off of regarding his upbringing, as in these films, there's no mention of Leatherface and his brother's childhood, but we do know that their family has supposedly been in the meat business for quite a long time, starting with their grandfather who brought them into the trade and taught the boys everything they needed to know. Nubbins mentions early on in the film that his brother used to work at the slaughterhouse as well, implying that either the cook or Leatherface followed in their grandfather's footsteps. It could have been the cook, and I say this only because out of the three, he seems the most sane and perhaps able to keep down a job like that, but it's more likely that it was Leatherface, whose appearance and proficiency would indicate that he learned his trade from his time as an employee there. This doesn't provide too much of a background for the family, but at the very least we can assume that the Sawyers have lived in that area of Texas for a long time, and that the family trade of meat, and subsequently death, is a time-honored tradition for them. This means that from the get-go, Leatherface was likely indoctrinated into this lifestyle. This must have affected his development early on in a lot of ways, but that doesn't account for the fact that Leatherface obviously suffers from some form of mental disability. While the other brothers may also suffer from a mental disability, their cases are far less severe in comparison to Leatherface, as they're able to function in the outside world and actually speak. Abuse also seems to have been in the cards for not only Leatherface, but all three brothers, as the older frequently berates and assaults his younger brothers, likely as their father or grandfather once had when they were younger. Leatherface, when faced with his victims, is a deranged and brutal killer, but when faced with his older brother, who is much smaller than he is, he transforms into an image of a beaten dog, cowed by its master into obeying out of blind loyalty to his family. Now that we've established the dynamic between Leatherface's family and its influence upon him, let's take a look at the way he moves and the sounds he makes. In the first film, we primarily see Leatherface in a state of murderous rage, charging at his victims and overpowering them with his chainsaw, or a hammer. The man is not very precise typically going about his killings with no regard for anything around him, even cutting through his own door when he's locked out of his house. He does show some semblance of precision when he's plying his trade of butchery, but even there he's shoddy at best. It's never confirmed whether he's the one crafting the furniture, or his brother is, but if he is the one who makes the furniture, then perhaps that shows when he's calm and in his element, he attaches great care for the objects that he crafts. This could also tie into the tenderness he shows for Stretch in the second film further supporting that when he's calm, he's more gentle and caring. That's just a theory though, and if you guys have any input on this particular tidbit, I'd love to hear it. As far as the noises he makes, we can often hear Leatherface making pig squeals in the first film, and when he does attempt to speak, the only sounds he's able to produce is incoherent babble that only his brothers seem to understand. Of course, he also roars like a beast when he's enraged as well. In short, the way he acts and speaks gives us all the indication that he is supposed to be seen as a monstrous brute with little intelligence. Now for the emotional and psychological aspect of Leatherface. I think one thing that defines Leatherface in particular is his and his family's disassociation with humans outside their own family. I imagine to Leatherface, with one notable exception in the second film, every one of his victims is nothing more than meat in his eyes. He shows absolutely no remorse for his victims, and with Sally in the first film, even joins in with his brother in mocking her cries as she howls for release, further showing his complete disregard for the suffering of others outside of his own family. He also shows his penchant for reveling in the fear he gives his victims, such as when he's running his chainsaw along the door of the truck at the end of the first film, or when he's stabbing the ice tub beneath Stretch in the second film. His appetite for carnage and bloodshed has to be immense as well, his entire life most likely revolving around death and the killing of other beings, whether they be animal or human. 
One detail of particular note when it comes to his family is the dinner scene in the first film with Sally where he's wearing a woman's face and serves the family dinner in an almost motherly way. Could this show his attachment to an unseen mother figure? Or maybe he's taken on the role of a mother at times for his brothers. I'm unsure, but it's an interesting little detail that the creators inserted into the film. The tragic thing about Leatherface, though, is what could have been. I suppose you could say that for almost any villain, but with this much exposure to his terrible family and the fact that he's mentally disabled, this notion rings particularly true for Leatherface. This man is the man he is because of the environment he grew up in and the manipulation he suffers at the hands of his family. But how could he not turn out the way he did? This isn't a way to write off his crimes, but rather shed light to the fact that he almost had no choice in the matter of becoming Leatherface. The greatest indicator for this is when his rage is quieted by Stretch in the second film, and he forms a tender attachment to her. She brings this out in him simply by stating that he's good, something I'm sure he doesn't hear very often. In his own twisted way, he even tries to hide her from his family the only way he knows how, the way he hides himself. These masks he uses, his leather face, is the final bit of his character that I'd like to touch on before we sum him up. Does he wear this mask because he enjoys it? Because he wishes to hide his true face and be somebody else? Or is this another way his family has manipulated him into becoming someone they want him to be, by hiding the man beneath the mask? We'll never know, but it's an interesting component of Leatherface to think about. So what do all of these things make Leatherface into? We have a boy who's raised in an environment of death and cannibalism, whose circumstance and mental disability shape him into a sadistic, cannibalistic serial killer who finds joy in the torment and torture he bestows on his hapless victims. Leatherface can be seen as a tragic character in his own way, but this tragedy is far outweighed by brutality, and he serves as the what-if lurking in the woods for many viewers of these films. I hope you've enjoyed this entry in this series, and if you liked this video and wish to see more of my content, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Please leave any thoughts, comments, or feedback you have down below, and don't forget to drop a suggestion for a villain you'd like to see featured in a future episode. You can follow me on Twitter as well for updates about the channel, at TheVioli. Thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you soon.